Hello YouTubers, another edition of Pure Gospel Fellowship. I always like to start off with a little fluff so you know people can uh, get the notifications and tune in. Um, went street preaching last night, uh, same place I've been going to in Raleigh, and uh, had the bullhorn this time, because if you've watched my earlier video, you've probably seen that... Uh, <clears throat> probably seen that um the cop there said well there's no you know the the permit is under review so if you want to use the bullhorn you can so I went out there and I used the bullhorn still kind of working with it a little bit I don't use the bullhorn a lot mainly I just use my voice or I got kind of a, a plastic cone that I've been using but um <clears throat> I'm gonna keep fiddling with that keep working with that try to get that uh you know worked out and eventually it's going to come out for review but you know we'll see how it works out um, I don't know if maybe the bullhorn was uh, keeping people from walking through because I noticed the foot traffic wasn't as much maybe it was just what was going on that weekend and there just wasn't people there but um, <clears throat> I just I'll keep working with that we'll see we'll see how it works um, Today's passage, oh yeah, and uh, from last night, the video is being converted right now, so very soon it's going to be on, uh, I'm going to try to get that on uh, YouTube today, on the YouTube channel. So, <clears throat> I'm going to take a break from the series for a while. I think actually the next two messages, it's going to be kind of a break from the Biblical Prosperity series I'm doing, and uh, you know, that's... It's all up to God, you know, whatever he wants me to preach, that's what I'm going to preach. So, you know, this series will be back. Um, I've, I've noticed I really don't get a lot of uh, a lot of views on the series. I get more views on the other ones, but, you know, that's not really why I'm doing it, you know. I just, I preach because God wants me to preach. So today's uh, verse selection is going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 23, we're reading verses 11 and 12. And that's really the only place we're going to um, today. So I'll go ahead and let y'all get a chance to, to turn there. Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 11 and 12. And the first thing we're going to do before we get started is we're going to pray. And I know that um, atheists watch my channel. Uh, who else? Uh, pagans, you know, homosexuals, lesbians, doesn't matter. You're going to pray this prayer. I don't care if you hate me and you hate God. Hold on a minute. Something's going on. Let me hear one pop. Anyway, uh, you're going to pray this prayer. Okay, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. In your precious name, amen. <clears throat> okay, so what we've been doing, so what we're talking about today is we're going to be talking about Shema. Shema. And uh, this particular passage that we're going to read is about David's mighty men. And uh, like I say, it's, um, it's going to be chapter 23, verses 11 and 12. If you're comfortable doing so, I'd like you to stand for the reading of the word. And after him was Shema, the son of Agi the Herite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. So here we're talking about Shema, one of David's mighty men. And uh, there was a piece of ground full of lentils. Okay, lentil is kind of like a bean. You know, I eat lentils a lot with my new, with my new diet. But anyway, so lentil's a bean. Every year, Philistines would come over, you know, after the, after the Israelites 
worked on the field, they, they plowed it, and they worked, and they got forth the harvest of these lentils. And every year, the Philistines would come, and they would take the lentils. They would take that harvest for themselves. And that's what we're seeing today here in America. We are having the Christian values that brought our nation together taken from us every year. One year, it's the violation of the invention of marriage. Now marriage, defined by the Bible, an invention of God, is one man and one woman for life. But instead, five people in black robes, over the will of the people, five people in black robes said, it's okay for a man and a man and a woman and a woman to marry. They took, they took our harvest. They took it. Before that, we got Roe versus Wade, which now says that a woman has the right to kill her baby in the womb. Our lentils were took. What else do we have going on? Now they're talking about pedophilia. Pedophilia being, being legalized. And not too long ago, we had the UN saying what? Transgenderism is not a disorder. But playing a video game is a disorder. That, I, I'm not making this up. You can't make this stuff up. So the UN came in and took our lentils. They came in and took our harvest. Because America's been having a harvest, okay, since this country was founded. And if you're from another country, you know, deal, you know, I'm just I'm just doing a little locally right here. But if you're from another country, I want you to look and see what's happening in America. And you can fight it in your country. Because our country was founded on, on, on Christian values, on the Bible. And we've been reaping a harvest from that. If you, look in, if you look in history, when we first got started as a nation, there is no way we should have made it. There is no way we should have became a country. But look what happened. The Lord brought a great victory in our country. There's no way that a ragtag band of militia, local militia, should take down the British army twice. Twice. The, Britain, the British came after us twice. We had the Revolutionary War and then the War of 1812. So twice we took down an army much bigger than us. The Lord wrought a great victory. That's because that's how we won. Because the Lord was fighting with us. So we're talking about a harvest here. So because our country was, was uh, founded on Christian values, because our country was founded on prayer, uh, there's, a, there's a painting circulating. Uh, it's kind of a print, really, of um, one of the prayers of the forefathers when they were, you know, uh, fashioning this country. And you just see, I mean, the way the story goes is that they will have somebody come in, a preacher come in and do a prayer. He had the prayer written out. He had the prayer prepared. He was just going to read this prayer, and they were going to get started. But something happened. He got up there to pray, and God came down. The Holy Spirit came down. And, you know, you can look at the print and see what happened. Okay, this wasn't people with just their bowed head, you know, bowing their heads, 
and somebody up there read the prayer. Okay, and we got a lot of that going on in our churches today. What do you have going on in church today? You got a bunch of people. You got a bunch of people looking at a six foot icicle who's going to give three points and a pull. And they just go on and go about their business. They don't even listen to the message. They're thinking about what they want to have for lunch. It's too much of what we have today. But anyway, we had prayer. We had prayer to start this country. We reap the harvest from that. We reap the harvest from that. Do you know that almost everybody who signed the Declaration of Independence had their property taken away from them by the British? Some of, some of them never even saw their families again. We need to take a look back at what our forefathers did and we can see how this country was successful. It's because great men of God got on their knees and prayed. Great women of God interceded for this country. And now our harvest is being taken away from us. Our lentils are being taken. So every year, every year, the Philistines would come and they would take the harvest. They would take those lentils. And we're having those lentils taken from us today. When they say that a man and a man and a woman and a woman can be married. When babies are being butchered in the mother's womb. We're having our lentils taken away from us. Where, where are your lentils? What is your field of lentils today? Maybe you have an illness in your body. Maybe you have a child that has walked away from the faith. What are your lentils today? What is your field of lentils today that the Philistines come in and take? Because I tell you, they'll take them. They'll take them. Like I say, what, what we're seeing now is just the beginning. I mean, if you, had taught, if you had said to somebody 20 years ago, hey, you know, one day gay marriage, is, gay quote marriage is going to be legal. They'd say, you're crazy. That's never going to happen. What, what do we have stirrings of today? Pedophilia. Pedophilia. Those of you who went to public school, pedophilia is uh, adults and children having sex. Okay, I'm not making this stuff up. That's being talked about. In fact, we had a movie come out about a pedophilic relationship that was nominated for an Oscar just last year. And people were making jokes about that during this award ceremony. <clears throat> so... Our lentils are being taken from us. Our harvest is being taken away from us. That's not the only thing. Okay? Polygamy. Polygamy could be coming back. People, you know, there were, there were three lesbians trying to get married to each other not too long ago. I think that was like a year or two ago. Three lesbians trying to get married together. You know, once you throw out the Word of God, anything goes. Anything goes. I mean, what's after that? Bestiality? Our lentils are being taken from us. And what do we do? We sit on the couch, we eat our Doritos, and we watch Netflix while our lentils are being taken from us. It's time to go out. It's time to do like Shammah did. And Shammah, one of David's mighty men, said, Not this year. The Philistines, you are not giving this harvest. You are not getting these lentils. So Shammah stood up and he said, not this year. We don't know from history how many Philistines were on that plot of ground. We don't know how many Philistines were there to take those lentils. And Shammah was by himself. But Shammah said, not this year, Philistines. You are not taking these lentils. So Shammah stood up and he fought he fought. And he went in there and started slaying those Philistines and he defended that ground. More Philistines came to take that harvest. 
He said, you are not taking this harvest. So I'm asking you today, what are you doing? Are you going to be a Shema? Are you going to be like Shema? And say, no, not this time. Not this year. You are not taking my lentils. And sometimes you've got to let the enemy know. It's not happening. You want to come in and take my healing? You want to come in and take my children away from me? You want to come in and make me poor? No, not this time. You are not getting these lentils. And the Word says, the Lord wrought a great victory. Another translation says, the world, the Lord worked a good victory. So when you're like Shema, the Philistines come to take your lentils, and you go out there and you fight, the Lord works for you. He's going to roll up His sleeves and He's going to work. He's going to work for you. He's going to be right behind you. He's going to work through you. And He's going to say, here's a man. Here's a man. Here's a woman that wants to fight. Here's a man. Here's a woman that's not going to sit on the couch, eat their Doritos, and play Xbox. Here is somebody I'm going to work through them. Are you going to be a sham of the day? Are you going to be a sham of the day? The Lord's ready to work. He's ready to work. He's ready for you to go get your lentils and not sit there and watch while the Philistines come and take them. So, it's time to pray. Maybe you've been watching this today. You've been saying, you know, I hear what you're saying. I should be doing more for God, but I just don't feel like I'm right with God. Maybe you're saying to yourself, well, there was one time I was fighting. The Philistines were coming in and I was fighting, I was fighting, I was defending a field of lentils. And after a while, I stopped defending the lentils. The Philistines came in and took my harvest. I let that fire for God go out. You can rekindle that fire today. Okay? Don't never let the fire go out. If you look in Leviticus, the, Levi uh, the Levi priests were commanded, never let the fire go out. Your fire can be stoked again. You can burn with passion for God. I always have people come up to me when I'm street preaching. They say, I just I had to come up and talk to you because you have such passion. You need to get that passion for God back. So if you want to pray, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you want to pray to get that relationship back that you had, I just want you to pray a simple prayer with me. And get on that road. You need to repent of your sin and start living holy. It is so important. So important. This life is just it's just a breath. It's a vapor that vanishes quickly away. What have you done to prepare for your eternity? So anyway, if that's if, you know, if that's you, if you if you're not right with God and or you were at one time, you want to get back. And if you're comfortable doing so, I just want you to kneel wherever you're at. Show God that you that you're serious. Okay, God will get serious with you if you're serious about God. I just want you to pray after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I've sinned against others. And I've sinned against myself. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Show me my purpose so that I can serve you. In your precious name, in Jesus' name, Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want to hear. I want to hear from you. And I want you to get uh, keep watching these messages, and I've got messages all the way back from six months. Uh, you can watch, and uh, I want you to to, to find. Uh, you know, ask God to help you find people that you can get around with 
good Christian Bible believing friends and y'all can encourage each other and uh, of course you can always shoot me an email I'll have the uh, I have the information here because I you know I want to hear from you and encourage you and now I'm getting ready to pray for everybody okay I just want to pray a simple prayer uh, if you need a if you need a healing in your body and you're comfortable doing so just want you to place your hand on that part of the body that you want healed. Uh, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, let me make this straight. I don't believe that being baptized in the Holy Spirit is necessary for salvation. Now, there's a different experience. Now, when you get saved, when you repent, you do get, you do have the Holy Spirit. But there's another baptism. Baptism, you know, and I do encourage you to be water baptized, you know, if you if you've uh, if you've repented. Now, Jesus Himself was water baptized not because to get cleansed from sin, but to be as an example for us. So I encourage you to be uh, water baptized. Um, but I want you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And like I say, I don't believe it's necessary for salvation, but I do believe. It does empower you. It does empower you to be a better Christian. So if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, just open yourself up to that. Or maybe you just want to feel God's presence. And God's presence does not compare to anything this world has to offer. If you've been a Christian for a while and you think you're missing it, when you see these lustful people, when you see these, you know, these lustful men, whoremongers and, and these women dressed like whores going to the club, you think you're missing out, you are not missing out. If you see these people going out and getting drunk and you think you're missing it, you are not missing out. You know what the world is? You know what the, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you what you're missing. If you become a Christian, I wasn't planning on doing this, but this just popped into my head. If you're uh, if you think if you think that it's uh that you're missing out because you're a Christian now and you're not still in the world, I'm going to tell you what the world's all about. If I can find it. Um, it's in 1 John, if you want to turn there. Okay. I'm not going to take all the time it takes to find the exact verse right now. I'm looking for it, but I'm not finding it. But I do remember what the verse says and it's the you know the world is the lust of the eyes I might, I might have to find it okay well I, I just pray that y'all uh, give me give me some grace here give me some grace I'm trying to find it Okay, I found the list of the flesh. Okay, well, maybe I'll do it next time. But um, all it talks about is lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh and the pride of life. That's what you're missing out on when you're. And remember, remember before you became a Christian, you were miserable. You were absolutely miserable. Anyway, uh, I thank y'all for giving me some grace for that. You know, I, like I say, that was that was unplanned. So I'll look for that and try to you know try to bring that, incorporate that in next time. Okay. But um, anyway, get ready to pray for everybody. Like I say, physical healing, baptizing the Holy Spirit, or you just want to feel God's presence. You know, the, the Word says that in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy. Pleasures forevermore. So I just want to want you to pray. You know, I'm just going to pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, send the Holy Spirit down and touch everyone that is watching on Facebook and on YouTube. And I feel the Lord going out now. I feel the Holy Spirit falling upon people. People, people are being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Keep it going. Keep it going. You get your prayer language, just keep it going. People are being filled with with your with the holy with the holy presence of God right now 
healings are going out. Uh, someone, your right hand is withered. It's just been all shrunken up. And you heard a popping and a cracking sound. And now you've realized that you can open and close your hand freely with no pain. I thank you for that, Lord. Uh, someone, your elbow was replaced. And God is changing that replacement into bone. And if you move that elbow now, you find that you can move that elbow with no pain. And I thank you for that, Lord. Uh, there's someone, uh, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a tumor on the right part of your brain. It's, uh, it's right in here. It's right in here, right where I'm pointing at. And God is shrinking that tumor right now. And for the first time in a long time, you haven't felt any pain at all, a uh, left knee, a uh, left knee, God is repairing that knee, there's something that happened to your, uh, I just feel like there's something been torn, a, a tendon's been torn in your left knee, and God is knitting that tendon back together, and you, you haven't even been able to walk on it, and uh, you, you've been stuck in an in a old-fashioned uh, wheelchair, one that doesn't even have the steps on it. You know, the wheelchairs, they got the steps where you can rest your feet, but you've been sitting in a wheelchair with, that doesn't have the steps on it, and you've been kind of crouching over like this because of that torn tendon in your left knee, and God is knitting that tendon back together. Uh, I feel someone in, in, their, in their left foot, they got a flat foot in their left foot, and God is making an arch there right now and someone your left eye your left your left eye is blind you cannot see anything out of it no no correction you can tell if it's night or day but that's all you can see out of out of your left eye and god is healing that left eye right now and if you close your right eye you can find out that you can see clearly out of the left eye uh someone you You've been deaf in your left ear. God is healing that right now. And if you cover your right ear, you discover that you can, you can hear clearly out of your left ear. And in fact, this is something you were born with. Um, you've never heard sound out of your left ear. But if you look, check right now, you'll find out God has healed that. Now, thank you for that, Lord. Uh, someone, your heart, you've got heart disease. You've got heart disease. You can barely move. You're in a lot of pain. The pain is gone now. The pain is gone now. And I want you to take your first deep breath. You have not taken a deep breath in over three years. If you breathe deeply right now, you'll find out you can breathe. God has healed you. Okay. So... I want to make one final request before I shut down for this week. And I want you to pray for this ministry. You know, I, I'll take prayer any day of the week. I'll take prayer any day of the week. So if you're, if you're, if you're watching and, and you, you agree with this ministry, my, my mission here is simple. I want to bring sinners to repentance and Christians to holiness. That's my mission here. And uh, I just, I need your prayers to do that. I need your prayers. You know, prayer, prayer is important. And believe me, God hears you. God hears you when you pray. And God will answer. God will answer. Sometimes you got to be persistent. There are things that I've been praying for for a long time. But I fully, I know in my heart, God hears those prayers. I know He, you know, I know he hears them. And I know that He is working on it. He's working on. So uh, I'm going to shut down for this week. Just want to remind you that um, there's no Pure Gospel Fellowship next week. I'm traveling next week to New Orleans. Going to do some preaching down there. And just the way the logistics work out, I won't be able to, to come on and to do Pure, Pure Gospel Fellowship next week. So back in two weeks, like I say, I'm taking a little break from the series. We'll be back to the series. I, I do believe it's important, you know, it's kind of an expository type thing, and it's taking a subject, it's a hot-button subject, but let's find out what the Bible says about that.
but like I say, it won't be it won't be in, in a couple weeks. So this is on uh, EC Street Preacher, and I'm gonna sign out for now.